Dear members of our boards, dear faculty, staff, and friends of the Hattie School, dear students, it is my great honor to welcome all of you here for the opening ceremony of the academic year. Welcome to all of you whose Hattie School journey, journey only now started, and welcome back to all those who have returned from summer internships, professional years, study abroad, or simply a well-deserved summer break. Welcome to all colleagues, friends, and guests for the opening of a very special academic year. 2023-24 may feel like any ordinary academic year before. There will be lectures and seminars, and students, professors, staff, and researchers will roam the buzzing hallways. The four months, the good souls, of our school will make sure we never go hungry, even on the busiest days. There will be fascinating talks by special guests, new friendships, long nights of studying, and even longer nights of exploring our hometown, Berlin. On the other hand, this year stands out. As many of you know, today's festive event marks the beginning of the celebrations of our 20th anniversary of the founding of the Hathi School in the academic year 2003-2004. Under the theme, looking back to move forward, the world yesterday, today, and tomorrow, there will be many events with the most interesting thinkers and practitioners of today, who will offer their deep insight into the themes we care so much about here at the Hathi School. The world today and the world 20 years ago, even at first sight, are completely different. In 2003, 9-11 had just happened, the war in Iraq began, Poland voted per referendum to join the EU, Lula became president of Brazil, that happened again, <laughs> and we did not have iPhones or YouTube, which didn't exist. I personally had a Nokia phone that I would be embarrassed to pull out. Finding Nemo was released, Greta Thunberg was born, and Johnny Cash died. If you don't know who Johnny Cash was, then you're a part of the younger group. I could add to this list, but I really want to focus on one distinct event, which occurred just a few blocks east of where we are today. The opening symposium on the occasion of the founding of a public policy school with the goal of developing a completely new perspective on Germany, Europe, and the world by training the smartest talents seeking to make public affairs better for all of us and by doing so in a way that combines research and practice. The Hattie School was founded with less than 30 students who came for a master in public policy, taught by, at the end of the two years, seven professors and 17 staff members looking after the opening cohort. We will present to you the route that we have traveled since then, but let me just say that I'm simply in awe of the extraordinary journey and the success story behind it, our teaching, our research, and our outreach efforts. We had the opportunity to welcome current, past, and future presidents, prime ministers, parliamentarians, Nobel Prize holders, groundbreaking thinkers, and of course, the most innovative practitioners. Our alums have become entrepreneurs, state ministers, university presidents, and members of parliament. I'm sure I'm speaking for all of us here today when I say that I'm so proud of what we've been able to achieve together. Throughout this year, we'll have the opportunity to celebrate these achievements, but also discuss what the biggest challenges for the next 20 years will hold and how we can best respond to them. Our Futures Forum will culminate throughout the year with events in a high-level forum in May 2024, which will bring all of these debates and issues together. For you, dear students, this means that you will have the opportunity to be in conversation with groundbreaking doers and thinkers of today, one of the things that make the Hattie School such a special place for studying. We also warmly invite everyone else to these events because open and accessible debates are crucial for putting research at the service of society. This has been central for the uh, central goal for the Hattie School throughout the last 20 years, and it will be in the future. Last but not least, today we also kick off the public phase of our fundraising campaign. Our goal is to raise over 20 million euros through a capital campaign in the coming years. 
A substantial part has already been achieved through two large endowments that we have been granted in the past year. But we still have a way to go, as we need to raise money also for our future campus. If you're interested to find out more, you will find a QR code on the flyers on your seats, which is for your information. But if you have solvent friends, you are, of course, very welcome to share it with them. <laughs> All the work we do would not be possible without the generous support of our funders, who I would very much like to thank for helping us shape the future. Now I would like to pass to my fellow members of the Hertie School leadership team, Deans Kai Wegrich, Turet Hustedt, Andrea Römmler, Managing Director Axel Beisch, who will tell us more about the successes of the last 20 years and what is its stock in the future of the Hertie School. Before I do that, let me just show you two slides, which show you not just the beginning and where we are today in an image, but who show you on the next slide the international network we have been able to build. When we started, we had the helping hands of very good colleagues who at the beginning helped us to build partnerships at the highest level with Columbia, the London School of Economics, and Sciences Po coming first as partners that we continue to work with until today. Today, we have 45 partnerships. We have many double degree programs but we also have something we're incredibly proud of, and that is our European University Alliance, Civica, which has expanded beyond just Sciences Po and the LSE to 10 partner universities in Europe, all dedicated to train the future decision makers in the public, the private, and the third sector through insights from the social sciences. And we're very happy that we're part of it and that we're working together towards these ambitious goals. Across the Atlantic and across other parts of the world, which we have then developed, we have been part of the um, APSIA network, Association of Professional Schools and International Affairs, which help us to exchange insights with Colombia, with um, other places across the world and an expanding network. And we continue to do so, and I think it helps us to anchor one of our ambitions, and that is to be really outward looking uh, in the way in which we try to solve public affairs, we do it in an English-speaking manner. We're still continued, uh, continuously committed to interdisciplinarity in our intersectoral approach, and we'll teach, of course, uh, you how to do exactly that, and we'll tell you more about it as we go. Now, before I pass uh, to my fellow deans, I will just announce that our presentation on what the Hati School has achieved in the last 20 years will be followed by a short Hati history film, which you have the privilege to see as a world premiere for the very first time uh, before we share it with a larger audience. This six minute film, and I've, told, uh, I've been told I have to say it's six minutes because people are only used to three minutes in these uh, events. So it's a longer version, but we have to tell our history well, is then uh, the transition to the most interactive part of this opening ceremony, a panel discussion for which the Hati School's past presidents, Michael Zürn and Helmut Anheyer, who join me on stage, as well as Anne-Marie Slaughter, former dean of Princeton School of Public and International Affairs, and former director of policy planning in the US State Department under Hillary Clinton. We're honored that Jan Martin Viada has accepted to moderate this, in this discussion on the past, present, and future of public policy education. But before we get to all of this, let me pass the floor to my colleagues with Kai Wegerich, Dean of Research and Faculty, up first. Kai, the stage is yours. Good afternoon, everybody, members of the board, dear guests, former deans and presidents, staff members, and in particular, uh, students. My name is Kai Wegrich. I'm dean of uh, research and faculty. And uh, before I start, I have an important question. Uh, how do I navigate these slides? <laughs> Uh, where's Camilla? Are there? Okay. Uh, I'm not nodding yet. Uh, just uh, a second. Um, um, dean of Research and Faculty, that is the one who tries to take care of uh, faculty and, and uh, researchers and a university is made of uh, staff, students, and researchers, and in our case, uh, uh, the Fuhrmans. And the faculty currently, and that's the nod, looks like this. So we see on this image uh, 35 heads. Uh, if you kind of uh, eyeball a little bit, you will maybe recognize that we are doing very well in terms of gender balance. 
looking to my left where Michael Zorn is sitting, that wasn't the case uh, in, in the uh, beginning. We maybe could be uh, a little bit more uh, diverse, but uh, we have been coming a long way. And how far we come, came, you can see on the next uh, slide, where you see the faculty growth from, is it 2005, uh, 2006, where uh, the Hattie School started uh, with uh, seven. But what, what does it really tell us, the number of uh, faculty growth? I think it tells us that the idea has worked. The idea that uh, we build an international school, international school for public policy and governance in the heart of Germany, in the heart of Europe. One that combines problem orientation with academic rigor, which merges technically sound and advanced analysis with an understanding of values, of the logics of politics, how politics works, the importance of institutions, and the importance of debate and uh, engagement. That uh, understanding that problem solving is not a technical exercise, but requires interaction and political work. That idea from 2003 and in the timeline that will be later shown, there's reference to the founding document, it's already in there, this idea. This idea worked. And uh, moving on to the next slide, which just gives, um, an idea of the development of our success in getting research grants. Now, such kind of slide can come with the risk of self-acclamation. Um, but what it really tells us is that we have become a trusted institution, an institution that has been trusted by donors, foundations, and research funders. And those who have been around uh, in the early days looking at Anke here in the first uh, uh, row, know that this trust had to be earned and it took uh, a while. And that is our responsibility to take this trust further into the early adulthood uh, of the Hertes School. And of course, the most important stakeholder group uh, uh, which we ask for trust are you, the students. And Turit, uh, Turit who's the Dean of uh, um, Curricular Affairs, Graduate Program, sorry. We'll talk more about that, thank you. Yeah, good afternoon, um, everyone, also from my side. My name is Turut Hustedt. I'm the Dean of Graduate Programs. And I think a university is made of research and faculty, but also students and programs, right? So let us look at where we started and how it, worked, how it developed over time in terms of our student community and the program, program offer um, that we have in place um, today. So what you see here on the slide is that in 2007, we graduated our first cohort, and that was 28 students in the Master of Public Policy program. We enrolled the first students, this cohort, in the September uh, 2005. They graduated then in 2007. But when you look to the right side um, of, the, of the slide, you see, wow, there's growth, right? So today, there's, we teach our students in, across four programs. So next to the Master of Public Policy, we have a Master of International Affairs, the MIA, the Master of Data Science for Public Policy, what we call the MDS, and then for executives or professionals, our Executive Master of Public Administration, the MPA. The MIA started in 2015, and we graduated the first cohort in 2017. And it was only just a few weeks ago in June when we graduated the first cohort of our MDS students. So all together, across the four programs, in June, we were so proud to graduate 300 students. And I think there's di di differentiation, diversification across the programs, also across the students. But what all the four programs have in common is indeed that we aim to combine, and I think we not only aim, we do so, we combine academic rigor and practical insights from the real world of policy and policy practice. And I think that is key also to the success, and that is also key to what attracts students to us. But students have not only grown in numbers, they have only become more international, and that is what you see on the next slide. So in the cohort, 
that started their studies with us in 2005, students came from less than 10 countries. Today, and you see this here on the right, the, our student community represents more than 80 countries. And let me tell you, we continue to work hard to grow this number even further. We want to be international, and I think we are also in our student community. That is what sets us apart from many other places, particularly in Germany. And with this, I would like to give the floor to my colleague, Andrea Römmler, our Dean of Executive Education. Thank you very much, um, uh, dear Turit. Um, dear colleagues, dear friends of the Hertie School, and especially dear students, Great seeing a full um, auditorium uh, again, and it's wonderful welcoming you all uh, to the Hertie School and to Berlin to, um, and President Woll already alluded to that, to what will be a very special year for us because we are celebrating our 20th uh, birthday. Now, 20 years, when I look back, and Kai, when I saw your faculty development slide, I think I was professor number 14 uh, in 2010, and I still remember a very small uh, group, which has now grown to uh, 35 colleagues, which is, as you also alluded to, a remarkable success story. We started in uh, 2004, and... The unit I'm responsible for is executive education, and that's sort of an endeavor that started in 2018. So we are celebrating five years of executive education uh, here at the Hertie School, and so far I would say this has also been a tremendous success story. But executive education actually started in 2004. When the Hertie School was launched in 2004, we started with executive, uh, small executive seminars before then the master programs uh, kicked off. But as I said, we have been an own unit since 2018. And we didn't just sit down and, and thought, okay, you know what, let's just engage now in executive education. This sort of grew over the years, and I remember I see uh, uh, President Anheyer sitting here in the in the uh, front row. I remember years 2015, 2016, 2017, Helmut, when your office called the Empire Program, during that time I was responsible for the Empire Program, and you said, you know, the, a delegation from the Philippines, a delegation from Brazil, a delegation from Canada um, is visiting Berlin and they're asking to come to the Hurti School. And we then offered one day, one and a half day uh, courses, introductions into what we called Germany 101 during that uh, time. And that experience, together, of course, with the observation and the experiences from our partner, uh, from our partners all around the globe, um, made us think that executive education here at the Hertie School would be something um, worthwhile. So our unit was founded in 2018 with six people. We are now a team of 16, and as you can see from the slides, we tackle a huge number of uh, projects. Um, in 2022 20, 23 we had more than 1,200 participants in our programs, over um, 60 projects. We work internationally. We have projects all around the globe. Just to give you um, some a uh, glimpse of what it is we've been doing. Together with the GIC, we run a class on female leadership. Last year, we worked together with large public sector consultants training uh, their staff. Members of my team have been in Singapore this year conducting courses uh, together. So you will not only, in the hallways here at the Hertie School, you will not only meet your fellow MPP, MIA, MDS or EMPA uh, students, you might also bump into a Ukrainian parliamentarian or someone working for the public administration in the Philippines or a, a fiscal officer from Nigeria. Those are our executive uh, uh, education um, uh, students um, and they are here also in the hallway and they love engaging with us, with you, so um, I'm sure you will also find that very uh, fruitful. And I do hope that someday 
you know, once you've passed your um, your uh, uh, degree, you've uh, worked, you successfully found a job, worked in your job, and so on. You think, you know what? It would be great to perhaps learn a little bit more about leadership, about AI, about uh, the new bells and whistles um, uh, of uh, organizational management, and so on. And then you might come back and join us in uh, in executive education. I wish you wonderful time here at the Hertie School, and I would like now to pass on the word to my colleague Axel Beisch. Yeah, good day to all of you. Uh, my name is Axel Beisch. I'm the managing director here of the school, but as a managing director, he takes care of all these some kind of non-academic issues, whatever that might be. You'll see some examples of that. And I'm here since 2017 with my dear colleague Helmut. Always a pleasure seeing you again. Um, we start with the buildings, the houses. So I talk only a little bit the houses. Um, tell a story a little bit, the number is very short, and then about you in two to three years' time, meaning being alum, and our alum right now. So not far from here, about 700 meters that direction, um, you would see, and you still do see, um, the Schlossplatz 1, where the European School of Management and Technology, the ESMT, quite a well-renowned, well-respected business school, still sits, um, is there, and that's where we were, where we started, short time, um, and then moved over, somehow three years later, to the second building, Friedrichstraße 180, where we were in. We were in the fourth floor. We rented, uh, still rented the first, second, and the third floor, um, and grown to 6,000 square meters. We didn't rent uh, the 6,000 square meters in 2008. That would have been way too big. Um, since, you know, having started with a rather small crowd of students and colleagues and staff, as you've heard, that would have been too much, but grown to it. And, uh, grown so much that we needed more space because there you see the tower of the Alexanderplatz over there, the, the large tower. And that's a rather small picture. It doesn't really tell you how large the space is. We just come from there. It's 2,600 square meters we rented over there. We have all the five new centers which we founded in 2018 successfully and, and uh, continuously. And the data science lab, all the PhDs and other colleagues are over there. So in case you want to contact the centers and research, etc., you have to go into the YouTube Right, five stations, leave Alexanderplatz, turn left, go through the Panem building, and then you're, you're there. It's a rather easy ride if you know how to do it. Um, then 2022, um, this was 2022, sorry. We, we were at 8,500 square meters, and now looking forward, um, we envision still more growth, um, and we think with about 10,000 about 10, square meters, it'll be fine, and especially it'll be very fine if we have our own campus. Because this is a building we rent space in, which is somehow okay, but it's not really our own door. And um, this own door will be twofold. One will be the new campus in the Dorotheenstraße, the Robert Koch Forum, 94, 96. It's about 10,500 square meters. And we stay here in the first floor and maybe part of the second floor in Friedrichstraße 180. So this is where the big movements in 2025 will be. You'll be here in 2025. Some of you will be graduating just about that summer. We'll see where we're going to do this. Not quite sure yet. Um, some will be graduating in 2026. They will make a move. They will make two moves because Alexander Shastasi or the college research will come here and just before all of us here will move out to the Robert Koch Forum. So it will be some kind of chess game we're going to be playing. This is the perspective with many more events in the very center of town. Talking about the numbers, just to give a very small group, we started with some few millions, four, five, six millions uh, turnover at the beginning. We're about 30 million right now, 300 staff half-half academic and non-academic, just to give you a perspective. Next slide would be, thank you, Camilla, is now two years later than 2005 at the Schlossplatz, you were 28 alum. Don't worry, well, not don't worry, but they, they are not the 28 alum 2007. My you now, that's, that's a recently uh, taken picture, and now you're, you and your colleagues will be two and a half thousand. Once you will be graduating, probably it'll be something close to 3,000 representing uh, over 80 countries. At the moment, we go past 90 countries. And we organized the alum with, um, in 15 chapters. And a chapter is a regional association where we have more or less at minimum 30 colleagues within that. It could be like a city, like 
in Washington, where we have about 70, 80 alum. It could be a region more around, but you should be able to physically connect. And then we will found, as of this year, local connections, as we call it, where less alum are, but still a significant number where you want to meet. And the most recent ones will be founded next week in Milan. Um, Milano, Italy, it'll be for Northern Italy, it'll be a real chapter. We're founding on Friday night, and just before in Rome next Thursday, we'll be founding the first local connection in Rome in order to move on there. But the most important one for you in the next two years is definitely the one in Berlin. More than a thousand alum in all different uh, professions you can think of in your field do make use of it. It's your source of contact, and it's your information and your support in the next two to three years. It's really important. They're open to respond. They're open to engage with you if you approach them. Last slide is this one now. One thing um, which has not changed in the last 20 years or 15 years is some of the percentage your careers are in those fields. You see they're more or less the same. I'll explain them in a minute. Um, but that is exactly where you will shape tomorrow once you have understood today, which obviously will be in front of you for the next two years. So one important thing to note, if you look at the private sector, it might be, well, private sector is hmm, it's not really coming good. That would not be true. Um, if you work in the private sector, nearly all of you still do care about our mission, meaning um, you are ambassadors of good governance and of the common good, care about public policy of international issues wherever you work in, and you do that within corporates, consulting companies, and startups. That is mostly behind the idea of private sector. It's not that you really leave that area you study, but you just tackle it from a different side. The other two are, of course, very easy to understand, public sector and third sector, there's NGOs and others. Um, they change a little bit, come and go by the years, but we keep the percentage, so that's it. But for you, for the next uh, two to three years, first it is to understand today before you then can change tomorrow. All the best. <laughs>